Hello, people, and welcome to a Let's Read, I suppose. This is a court order, I suppose, or um, a judgment. Let's say judgment. Uh, by a case that I was looking at, um, I've gone to a resource. I'll try and back it up. It's, this is um, the, the Courts and Tribunals Judiciary. And if you go here, you can click uh, civil, criminal, wouldn't, well, wouldn't bother family. I doubt they'll publish anything from family. You've got military and tribunals. I might look at that in a minute. But I was just flicking around on here the other day. And I, I, for some reason, I thought various claimants versus the supermarket. This is a supermarket. So like Walmart or Tesco's, Asda, whatever you like to call them. This, is, this one just happens to be um, Morrison's. Which is another supermarket chain. So I was having a little a little look. Oh, have I got two up? All right. Well, anyway, I was having a little look, and uh, I found it quite interesting. I, I literally breezed over it, so I'm going to breeze over it again. But I like the format. You know, just look at the form. So if you're going to design your own your own claim, um, based on feedback I've had from courts directly, they do like it to be in a certain format. Okay. So there's no point being cute. I mean, make it your own. Um, tweak it as necessary but essentially you know something something similar to this would be ideal <clears throat> because i think when they reference cases they being the legal society because obviously i'm not a member of the legal society and nothing i say should be interpreted as legal advice this is just an opinion on hieroglyphics so um various claimants that's what stuck out to me so that it's various claimants and the supermarket okay. And I was like, oh, various claimants, that's an interesting way to brand, or, uh, yeah, I suppose to brand your, your, your claim. Because obviously you sometimes see, like, people versus some bad guy, or you might have um, the state, the Crown, Regina, Crown Prosecution Services, or, you know, whatever, the federal government, or I, I don't know, whatever you'd like to see. So, but if whenever you get a ruling or some sort of judgment and, it's get, and it gets referenced in their society by something called pre precedent, I think it's called, then it would it would show up in their their books. It'd be like the, the you know in the, you know they'd have the case number there. They'd have like the two thousand and seventeen refer to the the various claimants versus Morrison supermarkets. So it would be it would come up as the various claimants versus Morrison supermarkets. And it's because of that I, it kind of stuck out in my head. I thought doesn't sound right to me. Let's have a look into this a little bit more closely. Now, essentially. Um, from what I was reading, I'll scroll down. You can freeze the page, freeze, have a read. But from what I read, it was something about there was a data protection act breach. Okay, and uh, oh, the claim here we go. So 5,518 employees of Morrison's whose data was disclosed by the action of Skelton on the 12th of January. Blah blah blah. So basically, a load of information, private information on employees, was given out um, by the actions of Skelton. And um, not necessarily Morrison, Morrison's, and this is um, a breach of statutory duty uh, and at common law, the tort of misuse of private information. So now they're talking about torts, which again is a, is, is a French word, sort of like a tortuous act, uh, twisting, which is basically a twisting is a wrongdoing, a real wrongdoing or a sinful, um, a sinful behavior. Yeah, it's a tort and extortion, extort, extortion. Um, but we just say wrong, wrongdoing. Yeah, it was wrong. And essentially wrong is a more Germanic Saxon origin, which is exactly the same meaning. Uh, well, almost, yeah, I wouldn't say exactly. Nothing's really exactly. Uh, an actual claim for brief, a breach of confidence. So I think, have a little read of this. I, that's literally all I read. But if you want to read into it, crack on, because this is just my snap judgment. So then when, once you've got that, oh, let me, let me just freeze it just in case. Uh, so that's the claim. The next page is blah, 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 blah. Facts, facts here. Hmm. So these are the facts as described by the prosecution. A few more facts there. Pause at your own leisure and have a read if you wish. I mean, whatever. I'm, I don't need to read all this. Holy moly, this goes on for ages. So I'm afraid you're going to have to. Uh, you're going to have to go to this up here. I'm just going to. Um, they're referencing all their statutes and nonsense. Conclusion. So there we go. You always go just, just you know, read, read the gripe and go to the judge's, um, the judge's opinion. Okay. <clears throat> I only literally read the first thing, and I thought it was quite interesting. In conclusion, 
I hold that the Data Protection Act does not impose primary liability upon Morrisons. And when I read that, I thought, ah, so there we go, that's quite cool. Uh, that Morrisons have not been proved to be at fault by breaking any of the data protection principles. Uh, save, uh, save in one respect, which was not co uh, causative of any loss, and that neither primary liability or misuse of private information nor breach of confidentiality can be established. So I was like, yeah, this is interesting. So you've got a big, a big supermarket chain who obviously pays loads of taxpayer money to the government and um, employs loads of people. And it's like, well, I was like, okay. So it kind of makes sense that they're going to lose. But there's the way that the judges made, not made them lose, but used this technicality to, to, to get the result that... It, that, to be fair, was due. I reject, however, how, I reject, however, the arguments that the Data Protection Act upon the proper interpretation is such that no vic vicarious liability can be established and that the terms are such that not to exclude vicarious liability, even in respect of actions of, for misuse of private information or breach of confidentiality. Having rejected them, I told them that applying Mahmoud principles, secondly, vicarious liability is established. The point which is most troubling to me is reaching these conclusions with the submissions that the wrongful acts of Skelton were deliberately aimed at the party whom the claimants seek to hold responsible, Morrisons. Okay, this is such a cleverly worded thing. Such to the reach the conclusions I have may, I have may, I have may seem, oh, oh such to reach conclusions I have may seem to render the court an accu accusory in furthering the criminal aims. I grant, ah, I grant leave to Morrison's to appeal my conclusions as to vicarious liability. This is all very much in terms of art now. Should they wish to do so, so that the higher court may consider it, but would not, without further persuasion, grant permission to cross appeal my conclusions as to primary liability. Wow. So this is this is this is the kind of things you've got to nail down. Is the language of the judges? <coughs> Excuse me. If you can nail down the language of the judges, but the way that I'm reading this is that these people have brought a suit against Morrison's. Right now, Morrison's is a piece of paper. It's a, it's a court. You know, it's a corporation. It's 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 the wishes of some people who want to create a business or a corporation for the benefit of selling groceries. Yeah, and the, the, in my opinion, the primary function of any corporation is immortality that is to have a going concern a business that goes on goes on goes on uh, through the ages without being um, as subject to um, deaths so you know like when a, when a sole trader or a, you know a single man who has a big empire pops his clogs it kind of the company kind of dies with him unless he's made sterling arrangements to 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 uh, come into effect upon his death but with a with a company where you have directors and shareholders it, it really doesn't matter you know you just sell the shares you the you know, shareholders can find a suitable candidate that the, the guy who had the shares can, can you know their family who inherit all these these uh, holdings can just become like a sleeping partner just like just pay us the dividends pay us what we need what's due and we won't have any control over the company or you can sell your shares to another new person who comes in and they say right well I'll, I'll pay you the value of those shares and I'll be the new director as a, as a you know it's very much um, business as usual yes it's always a glitch or a, or a hiccup so to speak or a bump in the road however you like to put it but it can be much better managed within a corporation than it can be with someone who who keeps all this information in his brain and didn't always necessarily write down every little contract contact um, deal you know you know, it's like it's um, you know, that might have happened within the course of his business um, career. So the judge is right to pick up that you're bringing a case against Morrison's, and Morrison's has not been proved to be at fault by breaking it because Morrison's can't break the Data Protection Act principles essentially, not without blame being held. And this is where I like when I wrote down here the point which is most troubling to me in reaching these conclusions is was the submission that the wrongful acts of Skelton were deliberately aimed at the party whom the claimants seem to hold responsible. So how can you hold Morrison's responsible when Skelton has deliberately done it, presumably in this case, in spite to spite Morrison? So this guy has spited Morrison's by releasing this, releasing this information. Now, I don't know who Skelton is, 
don't really care. But let's just say, you know, someone who's in a position where he can rem he can he can um, cause Morrison's to breach the Data Protection Act, or it seems that Morrison's have breached the Data Protection Act. But what's really happened is this, this, the judge is saying, no, you, you, your claim is against the wrong person here. Skelton is the person who's breached the Data Protection Act because Morrison's literally would do nothing. If no one worked for Morrison's tomorrow, it would it would it'd be nothing. It'd, you know, it'd just be a piece of paper incorporated at company's house. That's all it would be. So that's basically when I read this, I thought that's so clever. The judge has said that, and he's also said in his um, his little thing. I know this might seem to be that I'm supporting his criminal aims, <laughs> but unfortunately, it's almost like having looked at the facts, looked at the evidence. There's no, there's no way that Morrison's has been established as being any kind of liability to the release of this data. It's the actions of an individual. So essentially, the way that I'm looking at this is that these various claimants, whoever they may be, need to change this to whoever Skelton is and redo the case against the right party. And, um, yeah, I don't know why the solicitor's instructed by... Yeah, so there's a solicitor here who, for some reason, didn't pick that up. Interesting. Uh, so whatever fees they've charged you, you'd be more than welcome to say, well, that's um, incompetence. <laughs> if you're paying solicitors to know the difference between the right and wrong defendant, I mean, obviously they're following your instructions, but, you know... It's a waste of everyone's time, really, and most importantly, it's a waste of the judiciary's time. I mean, they just had to sit here, listen to all this nonsense, go through a billion pages of this stuff, have court hearings, call in all the parties, write his summary and conclusions, and all to say you've got the wrong party, mate. Well, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Have a little read in your own time. But always look at the judgments. Look at the look at the claim. The claim is always <coughs> the gripe. Excuse me again. <laughs> the claim is always the gripe, which is interesting. So loaded Data Protection Act breaches. Yeah, you see, here we go, and they're going down all the all the all the precedent, the fourteen facts of law, when really it's just like you know, private data. It's just private information, as it's used here. When was it? Yeah, under Section Four of the Data Protection Act and at common law, the tort of misuse of private information. Are you misusing my information? An equitable claim of breach of confidence. So that's a claim of equity now. You know, so they're they're going in. At, as as lawyers tend to do at every single angle that they can attack, but when you've got the wrong target, what's the point? You're firing out, you know, your your arrows aren't going to stick. But there we go. I'll leave it there.